What are the three main causes of fatty liver disease? And how would you know if you are consuming too much of these things? Fatty liver disease occurs when fat accumulates in the liver. This condition can lead to the liver becoming swollen and inflamed. The liver may suffer significant damage, leading to the formation of scar tissue, a condition known as fibrosis. This scarring can hinder the liver's ability to filter toxins from the blood effectively, allowing these harmful substances to accumulate in your tissues. Alarmingly, over 25% of adults around the globe are grappling with fatty liver disease, largely due to what they are choosing to eat and drink. This statistic highlights the importance of being mindful about what we eat and recognizing the impact of our diet on liver health. The first main cause of fatty liver disease is too much alcohol. Drinking alcohol can lead to a range of liver conditions, including alcoholic fatty liver disease. This condition arises because the liver, which is responsible for breaking down and removing toxins from the body, is overwhelmed by the alcohol. As a result, the liver begins to accumulate fat, leading to fatty liver disease. According to a 2020 PMC publication, Alcohol is a leading cause of severe liver disease and is responsible for half of all deaths related to liver cirrhosis. In 2010, alcohol-related liver cirrhosis led to nearly 500,000 deaths worldwide, and liver disease accounted for 50% of alcohol-attributable deaths. The real impact of alcohol liver disease might be much bigger than we know because it's often underreported. Sometimes people don't talk about their alcohol use or it's not correctly noted due to cultural reasons and problems with insurance. This means the number of cases reported might not fully show how widespread alcohol liver disease really is. Alcoholic beverages, from beers and wines to spirits, all contain varying amounts of alcohol that can contribute to this condition. The liver can only process a certain amount of alcohol at a time, so consuming more than it can handle can cause fat to build up, leading to inflammation and, eventually, more severe liver damage. So how much alcohol is too much? A 15-year study published in 2018 found that over 400,000 women who drank at least once a week, 1,560 developed cirrhosis. The risk of cirrhosis went up with the amount of alcohol consumed, particularly for those drinking 15 or more drinks weekly. However, drinking alcohol with meals, especially wine, was linked to a lower risk of cirrhosis. Women who drank seven or more drinks a week but did so daily, especially without meals, had a significantly higher risk, with daily drinkers more than doubling their risk of cirrhosis. A 2019 study called Alcohol Consumption and Risk of Liver. Cirrhosis found drinking five or more alcoholic drinks a day greatly raises the risk of liver problems for both women and men. For women, drinking five to six drinks a day makes their risk 12 times higher, and for seven or more drinks, it's about 25 times higher. Men's risk triples with five to six drinks a day and goes up almost seven times with seven or more drinks. The Dietary Guidelines for Americans recommends drinking in moderation by limiting intake to two drinks or less in a day for men or one drink or less in a day for women. The U.S. standard drink sizes are 12 ounces for beer, 5 ounces for wine, 1.5 ounces for distilled spirits or hard alcohol, and 8 ounces of malt liquor. Understanding the impact of alcohol on the liver is crucial for anyone looking to maintain their liver health. Limiting alcohol intake, or avoiding it altogether, is one of the most direct steps one can take to prevent the development of fatty liver disease. The second cause of fatty liver disease is eating too much oil high in omega-6 fatty acids. Foods and products high in omega-6 fatty acids are widespread, especially among processed, fried, and fast foods, due to the types of oils used in their preparation. Eating excessive amounts of omega-6 polyunsaturated fatty acids lead to the development of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Many commercial chips and snacks are cooked in oils like corn oil or sunflower oil, which are high in omega-6. Similarly, packaged cookies and crackers often contain these omega-6 rich vegetable oils. Vegetable oils themselves, including corn oil, soybean oil, 
safflower oil, and sunflower oil are significant sources of omega-6 fatty acids, along with margarines, butter substitutes, salad dressings, and mayonnaise. Fast food is another source, with popular fast food chains using vegetable oils for frying. Pre-packaged meals and frozen foods also tend to be high in omega-6 due to the oils used in their recipes. Eating a lot of omega-6 can cause the liver to make more fat, a process known as lipogenesis. This results in the buildup of fats called triglycerides in the liver, which is a key feature of fatty liver disease. Secondly, when we consume a lot of omega-6 fats, it can lead to oxidative stress. This happens when harmful substances build up faster than the body can get rid of them, damaging liver cells and causing more inflammation, which makes the liver fat problem worse. Thirdly, the substances made from omega-6 fats in our bodies can cause more inflammation, further harming the liver and making it harder for it to handle fats properly. Lastly, eating too much omega-6 can make our body's cells less responsive to insulin, a hormone that controls blood sugar. This condition, known as insulin resistance, can lead to more fat being stored in the liver, which is a big reason why non-alcoholic fatty liver disease happens. How much omega-6 is too much? If you find this information helpful, we encourage you to show your support by liking this content, subscribing to our channel. Some studies have shed light on this topic. For instance, a 2009 report from the American Heart Association emphasized the need for a balanced intake of these fats without setting a strict upper limit, suggesting that omega-6 fats should make up 5 to 10 percent of our daily calories. Another study in 2013 raised some concerns about too much linoleic acid, a type of omega-6, suggesting that swapping out saturated fats for omega-6 fats without increasing omega-3s might not be as beneficial for heart health as previously thought. Because individual needs vary, and there's a lot of debate among scientists, there isn't a one-size-fits-all answer to how much omega-6 is too much. Instead, it's more about keeping a good balance between omega-6 and omega-3 fats. This means maybe eating less omega-6 rich foods, especially those found in processed and fried items, and eating more foods rich in omega-3, like fatty fish, flax seeds, and walnuts. This approach can help improve the ratio of these fats in our diet. The American Heart Association recommends that polyunsaturated fats, which include omega-6 fats, should be kept within the range of 5 to 10 percent of our daily calorie intake. The third main cause of fatty liver disease is eating too many foods with added sweeteners. When we talk about the health of our liver, it's crucial to understand that not just fats, but also sugary foods can play a significant role in the development of fatty liver disease. This might come as a surprise to many, but the sweeteners we consume, particularly those found in processed foods and sweetened beverages, have a direct impact on our liver's health. Here's why. When we eat a lot of sugar, our body converts these sugars into something called free fatty acids, which begin to accumulate in the liver, leading to fatty liver. This condition is concerning because the liver is supposed to filter and process blood as it circulates through the body. When it's clogged up with fat, it can't do its job properly. This might not only lead to fatty liver disease, but can also escalate into more severe liver conditions if not addressed. A 2019 National Library of Medicine publication called The Negative and Detrimental Effects of High Fructose on the Liver showed that eating a lot of fructose and other sugars like sucrose can increase the chances of getting fatty liver disease and a more severe version called non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. For example, in one study, people who drank sugary beverages high in fructose for six months ended up with more fat in their liver. The more fructose someone consumes, the worse their liver disease can get leading to serious problems like chronic liver disease and cirrhosis. When we talk about the sweeteners we consume, especially from processed foods and sweetened beverages, we're referring to a wide range of products that are easily found in everyday shopping. This includes candies and chocolate bars, 
which are high in sugar and often lack nutritional value, making them a common source of excessive sugar intake. Similarly, store-bought cookies, cakes, and other baked goods are packed with added sugars and fats, contributing to the problem. Breakfast cereals, particularly those marketed towards children, can also be misleadingly high in sugar, despite claims of added vitamins and minerals. Another significant source of added sugars comes from canned fruits preserved in syrup. While fruits are inherently healthy, the heavy syrup they're canned in adds unnecessary sugar to the diet. Flavored yogurts, too, can be deceptive. They often contain significantly more added sugars than plain, natural yogurts. The beverages we drink are no exception to this sugar issue. Soda and soft drinks lead the pack as one of the largest sources of added sugars in the diet. Fruit juices, even those labeled as 100% fruit juice, are naturally high in sugars, and many have additional sugars added, making them nearly as sugary as soda. Energy drinks and sports drinks, although marketed for their caffeine content and electrolyte replacement properties, often contain high amounts of sugar. Additionally, sweetened teas and coffees, whether prepackaged or bought from a cafe, can surprise consumers with their high sugar content. It's important to check the food labels for products you are buying and be aware of the following terms that are all other words for sugars. Sucrose, dextrose, maltose, cane juice, fruit nectars, malt syrup, and high fructose corn syrup. So how much sweetener is too much? The U.S. Dietary Guidelines advise people to limit their intake to less than 10% of their daily calorie intake. For a person eating 2,000 calories per day, this would equal 50 grams of sugar, or about 12.5 teaspoons. But then, according to the American Heart Association, the maximum amount of added sugars you should eat in a day are 37.5 grams, or 9 teaspoons for men, and 25 grams, or 6 teaspoons, for women. It's important to note that moderation is key. Enjoying sugary treats occasionally is part of a balanced diet, but habitual consumption of high-sugar foods can lead to harmful health effects beyond just weight gain. It can seriously affect your liver's health. Being mindful of the amount of sugar in your diet is a proactive step towards maintaining not only liver health, but overall well-being. This awareness and caution can go a long way in preventing the onset of fatty liver disease and ensuring that your liver functions optimally, filtering and detoxifying your body as it should. Keeping our liver healthy and happy involves a few smart choices about what we eat and drink. If you're concerned you might be overconsuming alcohol, omega-6 oils, and sweeteners, watch the next video on 9 Warning Signs Your Liver Is Dying. Thank you for watching 3 Main Causes of Fatty Liver on Healthy Vibrance. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications for more health-related content. See you in the next video.